Hello there! Now we're going to do a very basic optimization problem. You might have done this problem before. If so, that's okay. It's good to see it again. Let's see the problem. Of all rectangles of an area of 100 square centimeters, which of those rectangles has the smallest perimeter? Again, we're going to try to solve this problem using a step-by-step -step process. The first step is to get out your markers and draw a picture. All right, let's draw a picture of this. Well, uh, I have a rectangle. Here's my, here's my rectangle. And the area is 100 uh, square centimeters. And I don't know what the side lengths are going to be, so I'll call them x and y. Now you reread the problem to determine your goal. All right, so um, let's see. We want to look at perimeter. So we're going to have P for perimeter is equal to X plus X plus Y plus Y because there's four sides to the rectangle equals 2X plus 2Y. That's our, that's our perimeter. And we want to somehow minimize this perimeter. Use your awesome algebra skills to find constraints. All right, let's look at our perimeter again. Well, there's some things that we know. So first of all, uh, we know that x is greater than 0, and we know that y is greater than 0. And we also know that x times y had better equal 100. And I think, I think these are the constraints that we know. Keep on working. You're not quite done. You need to solve for a single variable. All right, so if we look at our equation again, we have lots of variables and lots of equations hanging around here. Uh, in particular, we have, let's see, we have p is equal to 2x plus 2y. But we have uh, the ability to write uh, y in terms of x, and in fact, y is equal to 100 divided by x. And so I can now write the perimeter with respect to x is equal to 2x plus 2 times 100 over x. And after all this, this is in fact calculus class. So now you need to use calculus to find the extreme values. All right, let's look at this again. So we have the perimeter with respect to x is equal to 2x plus 2 times 100 over x. All right, so now let's take the derivative. P prime of x is equal to 2 plus, okay, this is 2 times 100 over x. So this is going to be 200 times negative 1 times x to the minus 2. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, if you remember, the local maxes and mins are, well, they're not going to be when uh, x is equal to uh, Zero. I mean, we could check that. I mean, x has to be greater than zero. But uh, the local max and mins are, are at the critical points. And so the critical points is when the derivative is zero or undefined. So the derivative is undefined at zero. But the perimeter when, when x is equal to zero is, um, is also uh, undefined. So, we, I mean, we could, we could try to take the limit as x goes to zero. And what do we want to do? We want to minimize the perimeter. But when x is very close to 0, the perimeter is very big. So that's, that's no good. Uh, well, let's see what happens when I see when the derivative equals 0. So that's 2 plus 200 times minus 1 x to the negative 2. I can multiply everything by x to the negative 2 if I assume that x is not equal to 0, which was, as you recall, one of my constraints. So um, I'm going to get 0 is equal to 2x squared minus 200. Divide everything by 2. 0 is equal to x squared minus 100. Uh, 100 is equal to x squared. x is equal to plus or minus 10. But since we're assuming that x is greater than 0, that implies that x is equal to 10 is, is a solution. So uh, this is a good choice. This is one of our critical points. And um, we, since, 
since this is th there are no other critical values we need to check for, and so let's see if this is a, a maximum or uh, a minimum. Well, to do that, we should check the uh, we should we should probably check the second derivative, and so let's see what happens here. So let's see if p prime of x is equal to 2 plus 200 times negative 1 x to the negative 2 p double prime of x is equal to, well that goes away and so it's going to be um, uh, 400 uh, those will cancel x to the negative uh, 3 which is equal to just so we are all very clear 400 over x cubed. So if I plug in 10, p double prime of 10 is equal to 400 over uh, 1,000, which is equal to um, uh, 4 over 10 or 2 over 5. It's not real important what that is. All that's important is that this is greater than 0. So we see that our curve uh, is concave up at this point. And if we have uh, a minimum at our, our point, at a critical point at x equals 10, and the curve is concave up, that means that this is a minimum. Um, yeah, so and that's the only critical point that we found. So this must be the global minimum. Um, so the let's see. That means that x is equal to 10, and y is equal to 100 divided by x. In this case, 100 divided by 10, which equals 10. Aha! Uh -huh. This tells us that the rectangle with the smallest perimeter and area 100 centimeters squared is the 10 by 10 rectangle the square. And you might have known this already, but calculus allows us to verify here that our intuition is correct. Okay, that's our problem. Now I know you might have said, I already knew that a square was a rectangle that would have the minimal perimeter for a given area. But, well, I mean, that, that's, that's fantastic that we already knew this, but, but we're using calculus to verify our intuition. All right? And, and, and you know what math's about? Math's about knowing that you're right without somebody else telling you. That's, that's why we do these calculations. So you don't have to say, well, I think a square is the, uh, the, the rectangle with the smallest perimeter for a given area. No, you know it because you did the math. Now, let's go do some more math.